Okay, for the new stuff today, it's correlation and line of best fit. But I had one person come up to me, and I know this is true. Uh, I said, please review, and I, I did first hour, so I'll review with you guys as well. What was that stuff that you were supposed to know from last week? Okay, there was three days. I know it was intense. I'm going to go over kind of the highlights, the stuff that I think is really important. If you don't already, grab your graphing calculator and get ready to use it. So here's a little review of some of the stuff from last week. Not everything, but what I think is the most important anyway. Okay, first of all, do you remember seeing that curve at some point? Okay, that's called the normal curve. And that means when you distribute something normally, there are a lot of things that will distribute out this way. IQ distributes out that way. Do you know that an IQ of 100 puts you right there? If you're a little higher than average IQ, which of course everybody thinks they are, uh, then you're a little bit to the right of that line. If you're a little lower than average IQ, you could be on my to be a little bit to the left of that line. Do you get that there are very few people who are way out here? In fact, that's defined as genius. Okay, well, how far is way out there? The 130 is not considered, I don't think it's considered genius yet, but 140 is getting there. Uh, and There'll be a few of the kids that I will teach today that will be in that category. Um, there are, it's not like they're like superhuman or anything. They're just really smart. Um, and there's other people uh, who are way down on this end. And again, it's very, very small percentages to be way on either end. Let's use some numbers that you might be able to relate to a little better than IQ score. Let's go with... Uh, Oh, wait. You know what? I'm just going to stick with in this hour, I'll do IQ. In the other hour, I did shoe size, but I'm going to stick to the IQ thing. Um, standard deviation. Let's make sure you understand what that is. I know that there's a way to calculate it in a list. Did he show you how to put numbers in a list? All right, let's do that right now. Let's put in some numbers. Let's say that these are IQ scores. And uh, we're going to put in the following data. 100. 104, 109, uh, 98, sadly not everybody can be above average, 90, and 126. We're going to put those 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers into your calculator. First of all, hit the stat button. If you haven't already, that's where you're going to put them in. Put a stat. Stat. And then I'm going to edit a list. If you don't have list one, list two, list three like I do, that means at some point you deleted a list, and I can fix that for you. But I'm going to pause for a second to see if there's anybody where you don't have an L1 anymore, because some Yahoo, maybe you, deleted it. I'm going to pause for a second to see. All right. Okay, now everybody's got a list one, so I'm going to put in these numbers. 100, just type them right over the other numbers. If you try to delete them, you might delete your entire list, and their L1 might disappear, which would be bad. So 100, 104. I know if there are leftover numbers, it's kind of annoying. You just have to hit the DEL, delete key, to get rid of them. Does it matter what order I put them in? Absolutely not. Calculator doesn't care. And I have one last number in there. I'm going to hit the DEL key to delete them. Now, I have a list 2 in there. It's okay. I don't need to have that be blank. I can have that L1 be in there. Now, to get my stats, go back to stat. And now, I already edited my list. I'm done editing. So where should I move to? What do you think? Calculate. Go over to calculate. And one variable stats would be a good one. I hit enter. And now... It says list L1. Well, some of you guys, it doesn't say anything right now. If you just said that first thing, you'd have to tell it that you wanted to use L1 for your list. In other words, it doesn't know automatically where to get your stats from. If yours did not pop up like this, try going L1 and then enter. L1 is right above the 1. If you have the old calculator, Right above the 1 is the L1, and you want to do one variable stats on L1. If you did not get 104.5 as your top number there, then something went wrong. I'm going to pause for a second to try to help people who have 
calculator issues. So who remembers now what the 104.5 would mean? It's the mean. Ah, get what I did there? What does it mean? It's the mean. It's the average. So that means that this class, if these were people that I had selected from the class, I had picked kids with a little above average IQ. Okay? Now, what do you think that next number is underneath the 104, the 627? What do you think that means? The sum. That means the added all up to. Okay? And then, which did you guys use for your standard deviation? The S one or the one underneath that? The one underneath. You're right. This one. Why? Because this is if you only have a sample of the whole set. Do you get that in the real world you can't ask everybody in the country who they voted for for president? But you could do a poll. If you had a sample of 200 people, then you'd use this one. This S kind of stands for sample. Now, I don't worry. You're just not going to use that number. Okay? Later on, if you're ever in stats, you'll understand the difference there. We're going to use that number. And that is our standard deviation. That means the normal amount to deviate from the normal. Okay, what was normal again? 104.5. 104.5 was the normal for this group. But 11 is how far most of them were off. How far is this away from 104? Not far off at all. It's only off by 4. How far is that off from the 104 average? It's off by 0. How far is this off from the 104 average? By quite a bit, by 22. And it's like, how far away are they? And then you average all the differences. That's what the calculator is doing there. It's a little more complicated than that, but it's basically saying that all my numbers were typically, a typical person was off by 10 or 11, actually 11. The typical person was off by 11 from the average. Get if that was this room right here. I grab a typical person and say, how far were you off of the average? He might say, I was only one off the average. Somebody else might say, I was 12 off the average. On average, they were 11 off of the average. Okay, so let's make sure you get the difference here. So let's say I take a different set of data, and its standard deviation is only 1. What does that mean about those people's IQs if the standard deviation was only 1? Talk to the person next to you and see what you think that means. Standard deviation was only 1. Yes? Pausing. Okay. So the answer to that question was, if the standard deviation was only 1, that meant all the kids were almost as smart as each other. They were all about the same in intelligence level. Do you get if the standard deviation is one, though we don't know what their IQs were? They could have all been higher IQ kids or all right around average. They could have all been lower, but they were all about the same at the point if the standard deviation was one. All right, let's go down this list and learn more stuff. N equals six, what do you think that means? Okay, what is N? There were six things that you entered. Yes, there were six people we were considering. Next, minimum. What do you think minimum 90 means? Ooh, not too tough. The smallest number in the list was 90. The max was 98. No, it wasn't. Max is coming later. Sorry. The max, where is it? There we go. Max is 126, and that makes sense because the biggest number on our list over there is 126. How about Q1 and Q3? All right, well, those are our quartiles. Now, memorize those numbers for a second. 98 and 109. 98 and 109. This is 98. This is 109. In a box plot, this is Q1 and this is Q3. They never call anything Q2, but what it would be if it existed would be the median of the data. Have I even found the median yet? Nope. It's on the list, though. The median is the middle one. Look at that, 102. So 102 was the number that was exactly in the middle of our set of data. Median means middle one. So that's 102. And then who remembers, got a short-term memory, the biggest number we had was 120, thank you. And the smallest we had was... All right, awesome. So 
that's what's called a box plot, and this is called Q1 and Q3. And what does that mean? That is the quartiles. So here's what that means. Let's say I had 110. Can you find that where that would be? Do you get 110 would be right in here? Do you get that that puts me in this quarter of the data? That puts me in the top 25% if I had 110. I'm in the top 25%. I'm not saying I am 25%. That's a different thing. Yes. You could consider the median Q2. Yes. But they don't ever list it as Q2. They'll call it the median. All right. Then, what if I had a hundred? Do you get a hundred to put me in this little set of the data? That's where 100 would be, somewhere in there. Do you get that puts me not above the 50th percentile? That puts me below the 50th percentile. Do you, put, do you get that that puts me above the 25th percentile? Because this would be the 25th percentile. This would be the 50th percentile. And it puts me somewhere between 25 and 50. Okay, so this divides it up into quarters. All right, so exactly where is the top half? Well, that's easy. That's the top half. And the other says the bottom half, right? Would you tell your partner what you think the lower quartile is? Between what and what would be the lower quartile? Did you get between 90 and 98 would put you in the lower 25% of the class? Okay. What do you have to have to be a, in the top quarter of the class? At least a what? A 109 or better. Okay, good. I think you have learned enough from that section. Now, another thing on this whole normal curve, you can have skinny or fat normal curves. Okay? This one's a fat one. Uh, no, wait, that's a skinny one. Sorry. And a fat one will be wider. Oh. Okay, but you still have your normal is right in the middle. What is normal again? It's the mean. On this kind of a thing, it's a mean. I know on the other box plot thing, it was a median. For this, it's the mean. It's the average of all the numbers. Let's say it was shoe size, and I figured out my other hour. 11 was the average shoe size for the boys. Okay. Now, let's say that the standard deviation will keep it really simple. I take, pick the typical kid, and I'm going to use boys because the boys' shoe sizes and girls are different. But let's say you... What's your shoe size? Are you a, round it to the... Okay, so he's a 12. What was his deviation, his personal deviation? One. He was one off of average. Okay. What's your shoe size? <laughs> okay, we're going to... I'm looking at... I'm going to go with uh, nine just to make my life easy. All right, then what is that? How far off? Two. His personal deviation was two. Do you get... If I average those all up, I'll get the standard deviation? It's not quite that simple because they actually take the difference between them and they square it and then that's complicated. But the calculator can find the standard deviation if we gave it all the numbers. We just showed you how to do that. Now, here's the thing that you should memorize. If I go one standard deviation in either direction, that captures a certain percentage of the data. Do you remember? It was not 70. It's more it's close, but 68. Very good. That could be a test question. I'd write it down. Now, some of you haven't heard this word yet, but it's official. We have only going to put the test questions for this into the final. You will not have a normal test on this stuff. So, there is there may be a quiz that's not going to count in the 90 or the 85% category. Okay? So, this is not going to count as a normal test. So if you're all stressed about, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to have a test on this tomorrow, it's not going to happen. You're going to have the final. On the final, there will be a few questions off of this stuff. Does that mean it doesn't count? No, that definitely matters. You don't want to take the final, which is worth 10% of your grade, and lose a whole bunch of points for st the stat stuff. But it was going to be on the final either way. It's just we're taking out the normal test on it. See what I mean? So that means it lessens the value of how much how this could hurt your grade. 
Yes. You do not get a note card on the test. All right. I did too. He we actually had a party for him today because he, this is his fiftieth year of teaching. Five zero. Isn't that crazy? And he has now covered for our math department. This is I can't even believe I'm saying this, but I I know I just heard just heard the number. Twenty times somebody in the math department has had a baby. He's covered it. Twenty children have been born, and he has covered them while they were gone as their sub. Twenty maternity leaves over the last like many years, like since some of you guys were in kindergarten. Yes. Uh, we're not. We had a little. We had a little gathering this morning. So a potluck. So anyway. Next, how about if we go out two standard deviations? Does anybody remember the number? Ninety-five. Very good. 95% goes out two standard deviations. Do you get that that means, in my context, 95% of the people, the boys, are between, don't say it, figure it out. Remember, this is my average, yeah, this is my average, and I told you the standard deviation for this class is just going to be one. Really simple. The standard deviation was one. Then tell me, what shoe sizes am I talking about that has 95% of the kids will be between this and that? I'm going to pause while you figure that out. From what size to what size would give me 95%? If I go two standard deviations, that's 1 plus 1 makes 13 to minus 1 minus 1, 9. From 9 to 13, raise your hand if you knew that. It was between 9 and 13. Good. Okay, last Let's see who of your two of you knows, and if you think you both know it, write it down. Write down what you think it is if you go out three standard deviations. Then what percent do you have now? We already had 95. What's it? Don't say it. Write it. <laughs> to go out three standard deviations, which in our case would mean shoe sizes between 8 and 14. That's going to cover almost everybody, right? What percent exactly? Do you remember it? Okay, then you do it. I don't blame you for not remembering it. What do you think? 99.7. Raise your hand if you had the same thing. All right. Good. 99.7%. Think about that. That only leaves 0.3% of people that are likely to be above 14 or below 8. Okay. Using the same data, you were asked to do something called CDF. It had four numbers with commas in between. We're going to do it right now. If you didn't get it before, you need to get it now. On your calculator, find the VARS key. The VARS key is right here. Now, above the VARS key is where we're going to go. So I'm going to hit second quit. And I'm going to go above the VARS to distur. Okay. Got that menu up. Now we want CDF. There's all these other things we can learn how to use, but CDF is the one that's most likely to be on your test. A CDF. Now, yours might look like this. Yours might need you to type in all four numbers with commas in between. It's not that hard. You know where the comma key is, right? It's right here above the 7. But if yours looks like mine, would you raise your hand, please, so I can see? Okay, that's almost everybody. If yours doesn't have this list right here, then after it says uh, normal CDF, you put in parentheses these four numbers. The first number is the lower, and then the upper, and then that's the average, and that's the standard deviation. Let me show you an example one. What if I said, how many kids are between 10 and 12 for their shoe size? What's the lower then? 10. What's the upper? 12. What's that funny looking thing called? mean, the average, which in our case was 
11. And what did I say our standard deviation was? 1. And then I just hit enter. Now, if you don't have this cool thing, you'd have to take 10, 12, 11, 1. And now it put it in for me. I still have to hit enter to actually get the answer. And that's 68%. Does anybody think that number sounds familiar? Yeah, isn't that what's supposed to happen? One standard deviation on both sides? Doesn't that make sense? All right. So here I'll ask you another question. Remember, use lower and upper. And when I, when I want to say like from 12 or bigger, or bigger means it could go to anything, right? You could put in any really big number. Now he might have had to use scientific notation. I think it'll also work if you just put in 9,999 for the upper limit. So I'm going to say, what's the probability I grab a kid and he's got size 12 or bigger? That's something you can answer with this. Use the same thing, except I just changed the question to, what's the probability that he's got size 12 or bigger? I'm going to go back to Distur, normal CDF, size 12 or bigger. Got to change these numbers. Size 12 or bigger. Get help from your partner if you're stuck. Check with each other. Make sure you got the same things. Size 12 or bigger. Okay, did you put in a 12? And then did you put in a, I put in 9999. Do you get, I could have put in times 10 to the whatever if I really, really, really want a big number. All right. These two stay the same. It pastes it in for me. I hit enter to get the answer, and it's 15.86%. All right. All right. So, let's see. Then, what if I asked you this question? It's kind of like, don't have to retype everything. just have to use your brain. What's the probability I pick a kid who has shoes that are less than 12. I don't have to retype stuff. You don't have to retype stuff. If I just did 12 or bigger, then less than 12 should be kind of like related to this answer I just got, right? So if this is about 16%, how many of you have quickly figured out that there will be one minus that? All right. Okay. Now I want you to actually use CDF to do it. We'll see if it actually comes out to rounding to 84%. Yeah. I would use negative 9999 for my lower. My upper is 12. True, but that's what I would do. And I got the right answer of 84%. I'm just curious, did anybody use like 0, 2, whatever? And did it still come out to 84%? Okay, good. And I bet you if you went out to like the billionth place, it might matter. But let's not worry about that because you wouldn't. On the test, you'd probably go at most to three decimal places. All right, I think you've got enough of what you were supposed to learn if you got all of that, you're in much better shape than nothing. Okay, got most of it there. Okay, that's three days worth of, of complicated stats. Now we just have to do one more thing today. Today, get back to this if you haven't already. The line of best fit. It's kind of funny. English teachers would definitely say the line that fits best. But the math teachers say the line of best fit. It's the line that goes right through the middle of these data points. Do you get if the line was up here, it wouldn't be going right through the middle of the data? You can just kind of look at it and tell where the line should kind of go. Okay, but just a quick reminder, I could do this by, you see how it almost goes through those two points at the end there? See how I made it go through these two? You can pick two points and then write the equation of a line that goes through those two, those two points because it's on the top 20. If I give you two points, you should be able to write the line through them. So I'm going to do that. This goes through the point 4, 4. 
and the point. Oh, that's too easy. Five, five. That's just a little boring. So I'm going to give you two points, and I'm going to see if you remember how to do this. Two, four, and six, comma twelve. Let's say the line goes through those two points. Write me the equation for that line. This is right off the top twenty, which is also something you have to know for the ACT test. Yes, you will get the coins before the end of the year. Right now, I'm a little obsessed with getting you ready for the stats test. Stats part of the test. Yes, you may. All right, so first of all, if you haven't already, find the slope. Just if you get nothing else, get the slope. I'm going to pause for a second. And if you remember the slope equation, that equation you'll need to write this is kind of like that. This is not the equation we usually use, but it's really close. It's just the equation for the slope rearranged gives you this special thing called point slope form. How many of you already knew it and it was y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1? If so, you have a good memory for this stuff and that's going to help you a lot. If not, you need to rememorize it now. Check that you got the same slope as the kid next to you. And then everybody, would you please use the point 2 comma 4? If you use 6 comma 12, fix it. Use the point 2 comma 4. That way our answers will all be the same. When you're plugging a point in, pick 2 comma 4. It's not like you're wrong if you pick the other one. It's just your answer will look different. I'll pause while you try. Okay, Dice of Destiny, the slope. Row 2, person 1, that's you. What would you get for the slope? Quiet, please. All right. Did you do 12 minus the 4 gives you 8 over 6 minus the 4 gives you, sorry, 6 minus the 2 gives you 4. I get 8 fourths. It's the same thing as you. Okay. Just want to show people how you got the 2. Raise your hand if you had 2 for your slope. Okay, go awesome. Then I asked you to use 2 comma 4. Where do you put them? The 2 goes in for the x. And the four goes, somebody's talking back there. Stop talking, please. Focus. They focus. This four goes in for the y. That's right here. Okay, y minus four equals two times x minus two. That would be a good way to do it. Could you multiply it all out and solve it for y? Sure, that's fine, but it's not required. All right, so that's a line of best fit. You just pick two of the points and make the equation for the line that goes through them. How is that handy at all? Well, let's say I have this equation. And could you remind me what it was? Y minus 4 equals 2 times X minus Thank you. Then if I've got this equation, you know what's handy? Is I can predict what's going to happen in the future, like up there. I could say, what if X is 12? Do you get I can solve for Y and figure out what Y will probably be? That's what's handy about these equations. Now, that's just by picking two random points and it's not perfect. Your calculator can do it perfectly. So how do we do that? All right, let's get some data and we're going to put it into the calculator in the same spot where we put it last time. So everybody find, actually, just a moment. Let me tell you about something first. Do you have something that was going up like this that would be positive? Does that seem like positive to you? It's got a positive slope, right? This is called negative association or negative correlation. And it's just going down together. If it's in a straight line, that's the only kind we're doing today. There is curves like this, but we're not going to do curves, so don't worry about that. Do you get that this one is correlated, but not nearly as tight as that one is? Do you get there are some things in life that are kind of like that? Do you get if you do an extra hour of studying for finals, your GPA might not change that much with one extra hour. But if you give in like five extra hours, maybe it'll go up more. But it's like not this perfect straight line. If you study exactly 20 hours, you will for sure get exactly an A. And if you study 19 hours, you'll get it exactly an A minus. And if you study 18 hours, you'll get exactly a B plus. You know what I mean? There's not many things that are super perfectly correlated like that. That would be an R value of one. This would be an R value of like 0.8. You get what I'm doing there? The number's getting smaller. This has an R value of, let's say, 0.3. We 
What do you think an R value of zero would be? No correlation, just dots all over the place. You can't tell if they're going up or down. Take a wild guess what this R value is. Negative one, very good, you're intuitive. This one, it's negative still, but I should put negative better in there, hold on. This one, it's going down, but it's not quite as tight. It's a negative 0.8, sounds good. And this one, I can still see the correlation, so there's maybe it's a small decimal, like negative 0.4 or something. But it is for sure not a zero, because I can tell this is going down. If there's just dots all over the place, then it would be no relationship, and it would be R equals zero. So R values, the new thing for today is two things. One is writing those equations with a calculator, and the other is what's R value. All right, so looking at this data right here, do you get this to be an R value of positive 1 because it's going straight up? And it's nice and straight. And this is R is negative 1. And this is, I can sort of see a positive correlation. So its R value is like, you know, somewhere in some small decimal kind of range, but barely could tell any correlation. Whereas at the bottom, this is considered, you can't even tell if it's going up or down. So that's a zero. Even a point 0.1 is close enough to zero to say there's not, it's pretty much no correlation. All right, so one last thing. This is weird, but these all have an R value of 0 0.82. So you not only have to know the R value, you actually, actually have to look at it because your eyes are better than a number. They all have an R value of 0 0.82, but which two would you throw out because they are not normal data? And therefore, it's not what we're looking for. Even though it's got a fairly high positive correlation, two of them should get thrown out. B and D. Those are not positive normal correlations. So you can have an R value that's a 0.82, but not really be positive correlation. All right. Next thing is uh, correlation versus causation. Get to this slide, please. This is that one I gave you before when I was talking about misleading data. Some people are talking, don't talk right now. I need your full attention. I know it's hard. We've been going strong for all hour, but thank you. So uh, if I figured out that all of the latest homicide victims had drank water at some point in their life, wouldn't that be a strong correlation? Yes, it would. Did that mean it caused their death? No. So there can be correlation without causation. Like, for instance, for a long time they figured out that coffee went with energy level. Like, you drink coffee, you seem to have more energy, right? But you'd need an actual study to prove that it was the coffee that was giving you the energy. Otherwise, maybe the people that were drinking coffee also were doing something else that was giving them the energy. I think we all know by now that coffee's got caffeine in it, and you can prove it with a study. You get a bunch of people to drink coffee, and drink some, have a bunch of other people drink decaffeinated coffee, and they'll not know what's different about it, but then all of a sudden the one group has the energy and one group doesn't, and they'll be able to do a correlation versus causation. So one more time, if you had a sunburn and you were drinking more ice cream, it probably, you could probably argue that the sun caused it to be hot out, which caused you to want ice cream. That was causation. The sun caused you to get the sunburn, but because you were sunburned didn't mean I want ice cream. Get what I'm saying? So some of these are causation, some of them are correlation. So here's the point. What if the R value is one? Some kids will say, well, then this caused this. Nope. That means they're correlated. You don't know until you think about it further whether it was actually causation. There are a lot of things out there that are correlated, and we don't know if it means, like for instance, uh, Diet sodas. There's some studies that make it sound like diet sodas are really bad for you, and there's others that don't. So right now, there is correlation, 
but not causation. For some things there is causation. They have figured out that diet pop, actually any pop, it wasn't even diet versus other pops, it was any kind of soda did increase the risk of certain kind of pancreatic cancer. Okay, so that means that there is causation on that one, at least according to the U of M study. Uh, and, but when it says it doubles your risk of pancreatic cancer, that sounds really scary. But your risk of pancreatic cancer is like, what, one in a thousand? And it doubles it to two in a thousand? So that still can be kind of misleading. Doubling sounds like, well, I'm going to get cancer for sure. No, just to increase the probability. All right, now go back to this slide. We have to do something special in your calculator called diagnostic on. Grab your calculator. Go to the button. I consider one of the most powerful buttons on the calculator. It's the catalog button. The catalog button, I'm going to clear off my calculator here, is right above the zero key. Do not talk right now. I need your full attention. That right above the catalog key, right above zero, sorry, is catalog. Then it automatically puts you into a special mode. Guys, if you continue to talk, I will move both of you. All right. If you're in alpha mode right now, see the little A up here? That means you can go alphabetically. So since you want something called D diagnostic, just hit the D key. If you look, it's got little green letters. Right there is the D key. I should have circled it in red right there. Okay, so I'm going to hit the D key right there, and it brings me to D. Cool, where's this diagnostic thing, Mr. Server? Arrow down until you hit. Now you could have hit air down arrow like 75 times and you still got the same place. But diagnostic on, go there. And if you don't do this little whammy, the diagnostic on thing, then your calculator won't work. You gotta hurry, please. Got it. Could you please help him catch up with where diagnostic on is under the catalog button? All right, hit enter and then hit enter one more time. And it'll say done. You have turned the diagnostics on on your calculator. They do not come on in the first place. Your calculator is just a smidge smarter than it was a second ago. Let me show you what that does. Go back to stat. Hit enter on edit. And put in the data that you see on the screen here with the X part being your L1 list and Y part being your L2 list. L1, these numbers go in your L1, and the bottom row goes in your L2. I'm going to pause for a second while we put those in. <laughs> it's not going to happen. All right, so there's how we'd write that equation. Our R value would round to about negative 1, so that's a very strong negative correlation. I was just telling the kids that tonight's homework, I would want them to do the evens on tonight's homework. And strongly encourage you to do it because I need to put in some more in the gradebook. So that's all I got for you for today.